Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon, episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host... My name is Caliban. Nice to meet you. Happy to be here. It's nice to meet you, too. Like, I feel like I know you. Like, I feel like I've seen you somewhere before. In, uh, in another in another world. <laughs> in another life. People people say, Audi partner, uh, instead Audi. of howdy partner. Oh, my goodness. Because they're all, it's like cars. But they're specifically, ger- yeah, the movie Cars. I don't think I've seen the movie Cars. Is this a bit? Oh, no, wait, I have. You're talking about the, the Pixar movie Cars. <laughs> yes, I was talking about <laughs> the movie Cars from Pixar. There's only been like eight of them. I know. And about, It took me a second. But I was saying that this was like the German version of Cars, and they say Audi partner. But oh. now we're going to move on from this okay. terrible bit. I get it now took me some seconds you know sometimes my brain needs to percolate for a little bit yes. before it gets the it joke it takes you ein minuten yes i don't know what that means Pop but correct <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna say a german cowboy movie this has to have been there's a, there i watched to be. an italian cowboy movie called il uh oh i don't know what it was called it was called my west so il huh. Uh, Westo, <laughs> and it was sure. shot. Uh, I think like a lot of uh, spaghetti westerns are. You know, I think it was shot like in the Alps or like in the um, you know the Alpenese or something like that uh, in Italy. Uh, okay. All those uh, Italian uh, spaghetti westerns, similar. Sure. And it it was about a little kid who's telling the story, and his dad has to deal with like a dangerous guys that come into town, but his dad's not. You know, he's not uh, John Wayne. He's not even uh, Gary Cooper, you know, in High Noon. Like, he's just a teacher. Okay. And so he gets some help from a, a friend of his. I'll tell you who the friend is in a second. Okay. The it's bad guy is played by David Bowie. <gasps> Why have I not seen this movie? In uh, his full, like, his goofiest, you know, out there is like, oh, I'm, I'm a war. Oh, I'm from the old West. <laughs> He oh read Blood Meridian and uh, did a couple quaaludes and it came on set. Oh, my God. And the father's friend is Harvey Keitel. What? And so the thing is, is that you know, nothing against Italian movies, but the guy that made it, I think, was like a comedian or something like that. And he was, you know, like a Roberto Benigni situation. Uh-huh. Okay. And he was popular and he had some money and he just really wanted to be. He didn't usually do these kind of movies, but he really wanted to do like <laughs> uh a Western movie. And so he basically footed the bill or got somebody to foot the bill and then called wow. up Harvey Keitel. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> and just for a laugh. And you know? David Bowie was like, Oh uh, yeah, that sounds wonderful. Uh, I just got done reading uh, blood Meridian. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm do on that. board. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. And the title of the movie was ill <laughs> Westo. <Are laughs> whatever, West whatever West is. <laughs> I already forgot. It's not a very good movie. But. Oh, that's too bad. Did you watch that like for the the David Bowie? Panel yeah, when you I was um, talking about yeah on that uh, panel about uh, David Bowie movies. Okay, I probably could have skipped it. It's hard to know. Just though. go show. Nobody else in the panel watched it. Of course not. I watched all of his movies. You did, and some of them were like, "Yeah, I didn't see that one." I'm like. Let me check the title of the panel here again. <laughs> it is all of David Bowie's movies. There, I guess a lot of people including were the like, one. Just watch the top four or five or something. I guess they just came in to talk about you know yeah we've all seen the man who fell to earth. Yes, thank you. But I watched that movie about the kid who likes David Bowie and starts a band that gets popular on YouTube, and it's not about David Bowie. But in the last. <laughs> Five minutes of the movie, David Bowie sitting in a Starbucks as David Bowie does. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, I can just see he parks his UFO, you know, outside. <laughs> double park. And he goes to Starbucks. He doesn't just go to like and then a, he's, a local He doesn't even shop. have a line, really. He just kind of like clicks on YouTube and sees this guy's thing. He's like, mm, all right. Like what you done there, kid. And then kid. sends him in an email. Oh, of course. That the kid gets on his flip phone because it was like 2009. Oh. But but th- apparently David Bowie did like the idea of the movie, and he gave his permission okay. to have like two of his songs, like not a lot of his songs. Well, that's something. I mean, <laughs> it's just weird. I mean, you didn't 
you probably didn't rewatch Zoolander, I'm guessing, but everybody remembers him. I in watched Zoolander. that Zoolander. Did you? But I, yeah, but I've seen yeah. Zoolander a million times. Yeah, uh, the the dance, no, the model off. I can't remember what. Walk what off. They call, walk off. It's a walk off. Thank you. Um, I love that movie. I haven't seen the sequel. I have a feeling it's not very good. No, and it's just not good because it's not good. But also, it just does a real um, kind of tone deaf take on. Um, on uh, d- uh, non-binary. I'm kind of uh, wondering, yeah, for the f- original. Ben is Cumberbatch. Well, then, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, arguably, uh, Derek Zoolander is is pansexual. <laughs> he he will uh, f anything that moves. But uh, but like Ben Cumberbatch plays a character who is supposed to be like the next, like in the way that Hansel was like the evolution from Derek. Sure. Um, his character is like the next level, but the idea is that he's like androgynous and he's, which okay. is like absolutely a thing in fashion sure. uh, and in modeling, but the way that they handle it. And I think a lot of the jokes are sort of like at the expense of rather That's than, good. you know, yeah. I just, I was wondering, like I haven't watched Zoolander in a long time. So I'm wondering like how well it's aged. I mean, that was like almost 20 years ago. I don't want to, well, I'm not going to sit here and stand up for it, but I, I think it's probably, Probably mostly, okay. Mostly fine, right? I love David Duchovny's part in that too. The <laughs> yeah. hand model. Right. That was great. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe enough Zoolander talk. Yeah. What is this show again? <laughs> yeah. Right. We're always talking about Sailor Moon. Um, but yeah. So listeners, we, you know, we took a little bit of a break, uh, but a much needed break. Uh, much but, needed. Yes. Not sure what we got all the rest that we wanted out of it. <laughs> Actually, I ended up doing a lot more work than I thought I was going yeah, to. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't as restful as one would hope, but... Yeah. Um, we, we're, we're bloodied but unbowed. <laughs> what? Look, at it's a it's Is phrase. that a saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You couldn't do it, Amazon Trio. You tried your best. Oh, boy. Like T'Challa. We were thrown off the waterfall. Oh, my gosh. By Eric Killmonger. Oh, my gosh. But then... We're going there. Oscar-winning act, double Oscar-winning actress... Angela Bassett wrapped us in snow. <laughs> I can't remember that movie either. And gave us uh, uh, what movie is that? The odd shaped herb. The, yes. The strength of the Black Panther. Yes. And we are back. Okay. Wow. Nice. Yes. <laughs> for more Sailor Moon. Yes. Back for more Sailor Moon. Back for more punishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And. Uh, I, you know, I'm excited to see where Supers is going, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Um, oh, yeah. Where where could it go? Maybe we'll talk about that. I think we'll talk about that. Later in the show. I think we will. Let's call it a tease. Yeah. It does a tease. Speaking I, of talking. Yes. Talking about people. I hear them whisper. <laughs> you won't believe it. <laughs> but I talking wanted about to take this chance on this this episode, this not exactly our 150th episode, but we have, um, what do you call it, uh, sequicentennial or whatever the half of 200 is. Yeah. The half of 100, you know. Uh, this is this is the L, right. not the C. <laughs> the L. Or the, or the CL. This is before you the CL. You need to explain it to me. Because it's Roman numerals. I know. Before the CL. Like, I know X and I know I, and that's, that's what I know, man. You know, seal, a kiss from a rose. Uh, before that. <laughs> On our 149th point nine 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 episode, this episode, we wanted to do a little little housework. Yes, clear the decks before yes. we dive right back in. And one of those uh, duties that we have to do is to talk about some of the reviews that we've been getting. Excellent on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher. Uh, oh, excuse me, no. See so at the crossroads, right? Is Stitcher gone? I believe Stitcher is gone now. Oh. Uh, it has become absorbed by something else, Pandora, something like that. Okay. I think I got that right. But anyway, uh, whatever platform you listen to, uh, we look at your reviews and we read them on the air. And I've got yes. a five-star review here. Excellent. From user Ash3070. Now, this uh, came out, this got caught in the in the iTunes dryer. It didn't get spit out until oh, recently. no. So we apologize. It was five months ago that this was uh, left by Ash. Okay. But uh, Ash says, awesome podcast. I'll always have, oh, I should say, uh, title of the review, uh, Rose Emoji. Ooh. And it says, five out of five roses. 
Excellent. I, I love the creativity there. Awesome podcast. I'll always have at least a passive love of Sailor Moon, but this podcast has reignited an active love of the show. Thanks. Smile emoji, hearts emoji. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm I'm really happy to hear that uh, the show has like reignited the love for, for this anime. Yeah. And Ash3070 is a user from Ireland. Oh, that's awesome. I'm always like super surprised that uh, we have listeners from like all around the world. So hello, Ireland um, from the U.S. Ireland, how do you really feel about Kenneth Branagh? <laughs> <laughs> National one, hero? One Perot movie too far. Local local boy? <laughs> or did he uh, jump ship uh, and do too much uh, of the Kings uh, with Shakespeare? But uh, uh, well, either way. Yeah, he's, he's a big Shakespeare guy. I know you saw Belfast. You really like that. I did see Belfast. I have um, not seen it yet. I thought Belfast was 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 decent. I I, I do remember liking it. I'm um, interested in his um, sort of autobiographical story, but I'll tell you this about Kenneth Branagh. Um, maybe this is weird, but like, as a as an actor and a <laughs> as an amateur dramaturge, although uh, my college professor would die again if he heard me say that, um, <laughs> I actually like him the most when he's not Shakespearean. I can see. I think that. his Shakespearean is fine. Yeah. Although I think that he overdoes it a little bit, mm-hmm. but that's just kind of my style. But I like, he's a really good actor in, you know, regular roles. Yeah, I I can see that a lot. I guess my the one caveat I have is, and this is probably just me being really super nostalgic about it, but I love Much Ado mm-hmm. About Nothing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I love him being Benedict. Mm-hmm. So I know, mm-hmm. I know. Look. I saw it in high school. My high school drama teacher showed it to us, and I fell in love with it. And I own a copy. <laughs> I have the physical media for it. Okay, so I. And it's got Master Thespian Keanu Reeves throwing it down. <laughs> I know. I must be sad when I am sad I know. and laugh at no man's jest. I know. And Denzel Washington's in it too. Yeah. Well, he's good. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, he did some Shakespeare recently. He did do some Shakespeare recently. And got a lot recently. of uh, credit for that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I liked that uh, Macbeth more, but, you know. Anyways. Uh, anyway, thank you for your comment, Ash3070, and sorry about talking about a, uh English playwright for the entire segment. <laughs> um, if you want to leave us a comment uh, or a review on your listening platform of choice, we'd really appreciate it. You mm-hmm. know, give us give us a nice rating. Give us yes. a review. Uh, give us a star rating. Uh, it really does help us out. Uh, I can't tell you how immeasurably it helps and how immeasurably good it makes us feel. So thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I have some Sailor Moon related news oh. that I would like to talk about well, briefly. Lay it on us. Um, so Sailor Moon Cosmos, I'm sure um, a lot of fans are already aware of this. Uh, parts one and two have both been released in movie theaters in Japan. Um, and Cosmos follows the fifth and final arc of the manga, and it is essentially the fifth quote unquote season of Sailor Moon Crystal. So this is the end of Sailor Moon Crystal. Um, There is still no North American release date for the two films. Uh, It most likely will be released on Netflix, that's my opinion, Um, just like the Sailor Moon Eternal films, Mm -hmm. because the Eternal films were released on Netflix at the same time. Um, And so I think they'll probably come out at the same time. But fans outside of Japan are hoping that Cosmos will have a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's unclear if that will happen since it it didn't happen for Eternal. So you can't really say it's a sure for sure thing and nobody's heard anything. Um, But it was recently announced that Sailor Cosmos films will be released on Blu-ray and DVD in Japan on December 20th. Okay. So um, this release only includes Japanese audio, no subtitles, um, and there's currently no release date for Blu-ray DVDs outside of Japan. So if you're a really hardcore fan, you could potentially, I don't know, through a buyer or maybe uh, a third-party buyer or like Amazon Japan or whatever, you could buy a Blu-ray or um, 
from the the Japanese Blu-ray discs um, are <laughs> and you spoke Japanese. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, they're Region A, so you can play them on a North American <laughs> Blu-ray player. All but you the, Japanese speaking North Americans, yeah, right. enjoy. Right. But the DVD, it's not compatible with DVD players. So yeah, um, I, I mean, I don't have like a traditional Blu-ray player, um, right? So I can't. Uh, but I'm sure that there are Blu-ray players that have all kinds. Well, actually, they try to re- restrict this, I guess, to keep you from doing things. Yes. Um, but there's got to be like loadable subtitles, right? So if you get like I don't a fan know. sub, maybe, or you could always buy the disc. Rip it with a Blu-ray uh, drive, you know, into your computer, and then I'm sure fans have already translated the entire thing, uh, yeah. and get a download a fan sub, you know, off of uh, the internet. That's possible. That's what I would do. Yeah, um, but it's. I also wanted to mention it's unclear if the English dub or for both films will be completed. Um, we're, I mean, we're completed prior to the SAG AFTRA uh, strike. I don't know. You know, maybe they're waiting because they would probably want them to come out together. So voice. So. Yeah. But I've heard that voice actors have a different guild, though. Do they? they? OK. I could be talking out of the wrong side of my mouth. I, I don't think, know. I, yeah. I think if you are a uh, both a live action performer and a voice actor, uh-huh. y- you are restricted, you know, by um, by your SAG-AFTRA membership. OK. But I don't. I don't if you're think just that, a voice actor, is yeah, it don't different? don't quote me on that. Okay. But I but I've heard about other productions because um, I think cartoons are still going, right? That's a great question. They're made but so I far in advance; answer. it's hard to know how they'd be affected by this. Yeah, I know where Lower Ducks is coming out, but I don't know if right. how how long ago that was done and dusted. So yeah, that's a Star Trek show. Yes, that's a Star Trek show. <laughs> So anyway, um, that's interesting. Uh, here's the biggest question, the most important question. Though. Yes. Is there a uh, crystal version of the Amazon Trio? That's what I need to know. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, there is a crystal version of the oh Amazon Trio. Oh, my God. And it, so the thing that I like about crystal is it follows the manga pretty dang closely. Okay. So it's not as, in my opinion, it's not as... Um, What's a good word for it? It's not goof tastic. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> and it's not as predatory as it oh, was. Okay. Right. Is it as in the original uh, '90s anime? Supers. So um, I'm not saying that's not there at all, but I'm just saying, in my opinion, I think it's it's less. And um, well, I gotta see this. Of course you do. And perhaps I will someday. Yes. Uh, maybe that will be uh, something that we go into in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that'll be a Patreon feature because um, we got them. I mean, it's on Netflix, yes. right? Yeah. All of Crystal is whole, on whole Netflix show. except for the two Cosmos films. Right, That's well, what we're waiting for. You on. let me know when I'm ready for that. Okay. And yeah, the trio can't show up in the Eternal films. So there's... In the films. Yeah. There's two... <laughs> Theatrical length films for the fourth arc and for the fifth arc. Well, when you cut out all the predation, maybe there's not a lot left. <laughs> oh my god! Right? Maybe they're like, "Where is this horse?" Oh, I found him. Great. <laughs> no, we're dead. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it, yeah, it's yeah. There's there's Pegasus too, but anyways, <laughs> the show that we watch. I know. Well, we keep watching it for whatever reason, and people keep listening for whatever reason. And one thing that we have asked people to do in the past is to, if they are Spotify users, go on Spotify yes, and leave comments, uh, basically tell us what they thought of episodes as they come out. And of course, famously, this is a feature that has worked sometimes yeah. and not worked other times. Mm-hmm. But in the time that we paused uh, and took a break, it has worked like gangbusters and so I wanted to nice. share some of the user comments and listener comments that we got from past episodes on okay. Spotify uh, for episode 149, Mirrors of Dreams, the Amazon's last stage, yes. our last regular episode. We got a couple different comments on that episode. We talked about, uh, I guess, because the <clears throat> strike was either looming or it just started. We were talking about uh, unions. Uh huh. And so uh, Black Star Raven said, stand unions, except for the U.S. police union. F those guys. Um. I full heartedly agree with that oh, statement. Okay. 
I um, the, well, the, the, I mean, I stand with unions. I'm... The views of this user do not necessarily reflect the views of this show. Oh yeah, okay. Except All when right. they do. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so thanks for that comment, Black Star Raven Ribbon uh, Ribbon emoji. Nice. Uh, said, uh, I like the obligatory souvenir being consumables. We're talking about uh, the souvenir that you bring. Oh, yes, the uh, omiyage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, better, a, better a tin of Old Bay than dozens of crab-shaped keychains. <laughs> That's, uh, wow, very well said. Very picturesque. Yeah, I, I'm imagining this in my mind. I feel like we're, you know, you came back from a trip from San Francisco and you just got a whole box full of crab keychains. <laughs> yeah, San, San Francisco? I Is don't there know. Crab in San Francisco? I, I just wanted to pull. Some I'm not sort saying of there's not. Like, um, I just thought maybe locale. like you know, Grandma goes to Maine a lot for some reason. Okay, you're yeah, me maybe <laughs> more so. Anyway, got you another keychain, eh? Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for that ribbon. Fandom Casual said Union Strong in my house household too. Fist emoji. Yes. Loved Cal's reactions to nice. the Amazon trio went out. Uh, can't wait to see how he feels about what's coming up. Luna emoji. Yay for Q&A working. Yeah, all right. It works now. <laughs> yes. Yay for it, it working. It works because I leave it alone. And I just, yes. go, eight days later, I go, oh, okay, there's something there. So <laughs> it's like it's like a crab trap in that way. You got to let it go. <laughs> I, just let, a, it, let them come to you. A watched crab trap never You're just works. sitting there next to the crab trap. Yeah. Clutching your old bay. Yeah. Waiting for a sign. Oh, my God. It's never going to happen. Oh, my God. You're just going to, as soon as a crab goes into that trap, you're just going to assault them with Old Bay. <laughs> Hit the water or wash it away. <laughs> no, I got to get it. Get it on there. Get him now. Oh, my God. So thanks for those comments uh, on our Shore Leave episode, uh, our last episode before our break. Shore Leave 11, where we talked about soy sauce and the phenomenon of sukban. Yes. Uh, or sorry, skiban. Yes. Uh, where uh, young punk Japanese girls get into trouble uh, yeah. on TV. Uh, not in real life. Uh, <laughs> we had a couple different comments. We had a comment from Shars saying, eagerly waiting for the next actual Sailor Moon episode. Smiley face. Shars, you're only going to wait a little longer. Yeah, it'll, it'll be here soon. But it is going to happen. We got a comment from Helena La Rota Lopez who said, testing, testing, beep, boop. <laughs> So <laughs> just we hear sure. you loud and clear. Yes. Helena. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for checking in. Yes, the Q&A does seem to be working. Yes. I'm sure as soon as I've said that, it'll stop. Uh, and Ribbon, oh, gosh. Uh, Ribbon Emoji once again commented, the pronunciation of skibon made me imagine long-skirted girls smoking and playing skee-ball. <laughs> Which, <laughs> love it. That's your show right there. Yeah, I know. Also love ski ball. Like whenever I went to, I, this is a tangent that isn't necessary, but I'm going to go on it anyways. Whenever I I went to Circus Pizza or Chuck E. Cheese, um, I, my game of choice was ski ball because I was not good at video games, and I was I was okay at it. I I got a decent amount of tickets for it. Um, probably still one of my favorite games to play in an arcade, but I'd be willing to give other games a shot. The best way to get a ring that will turn your finger green. Oh, you're so right. The The prizes are just crap. But you're so excited and you're a kid. You're like, I can win prizes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, great, more plastic stuff to just, you know, hoard in my room. It's like How you're... many wiggly wall walkers can I get? Oh, God, I love those things. And then they get all dusty and... <laughs> gross <laughs> yeah, and you can't use right. them anymore <laughs> anyways uh and they have to be disposed of yes. uh, safely yeah yes. so that is our comments on our uh spotify episodes and like i said at the beginning of the segment uh you can always leave a comment on spotify episodes and to be honest you know we got a lot of episodes so if yeah, you are like not caught up and you're you know in the mid 50s or something like that and you're like Oh, good point. Or, oh, you got this wrong. Sure. Uh, you can always throw it on there. Yeah. And, you know, I just look through all of them every now and then. And so we will uh, read your comment on the air. That's awesome. And thank, thank you again for um, your responses for to the Spotify questions. I do have a little bit more Sailor Moon news. Oh, do tell. Uh, so uh, Kotono Mitsuishi is the Japanese voice actress who plays Usagi. Hmm. And she is the only voice actor who has played the same character in both the original 90s anime and uh, Sailor Moon Crystal. Did she do the whole anime? Yes. The original one? Yes. Okay. Yes, she this did. Is, this, is your, this is our 
Goku, this is our yes. our One Piece. This is Ash Ketchum for Pokemon. Yeah, right, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is a rumor that Mitsuishi said that she is going to retire playing Usagi slash Sailor <gasps> Moon. Yeah, stop clutching your pearls. Don't how, go is there. She, how is she going to do the reboot I know. where she's the mom? <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess Chibi is 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 Sailor Moon. Uh huh. And then we'll do another Dragon Ball. Um, for some reason, she had a child then oh again in her forties. Oh <laughs> so there's oh a, there's a there's a new Chibi Moon. Sure, sure, right, exactly. Call me, <laughs> Toei. Call me. I get a, I get a video call. Ring ring. It's the cat. Cat mouse. <laughs> it's, the puss, it's the puss in boots. <laughs> It's like, you want to talk? You got an idea? <laughs> oh, my God. For, yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Are you a cat or a mouse? It's ashing a cigarette. <laughs> it's so jaded. No, it's got the cigar on the end of its foil, right? It just <laughs> smokes it like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Time so, is money. Come on. <laughs> However, it's possible that this is just a misinterpretation and or, like, misconstrued translation. Uh-oh. Um, in the Sailor Moon Cosmos visual guidebook because you have to have something you have to have to have merch <laughs> yeah you have to have guidebooks you know everything merchandising merchandising so uh mitsuishi has a lengthy interview in that and the very last paragraph she said something to the effect that cosmos was the last time uh that she will play usagi chan in in a video and some fans interpreted that to mean that she is retiring from playing usagi completely Uh-oh. uh and will never play her again but other fans have interpreted it as this is the last time she will play usagi in crystal to be fair and it is the end of crystal right to be fair she never specifically said that she's retiring so i think you kind of have to wait and see on it is my interpretation of it you know <sighs> yeah it seems like there would be i mean that'd be a big deal right I think it would be a big deal. There's some, am I making this up? I thought that there was some very famous CU uh, recently who was like saying, well, that's it. I'm, I'm going to stop. Um, there, The actress who had played uh, Ash Ketchum is retiring. Is it, oh, that's, yeah, that's it. And then the voice of Mario is oh, retiring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so. Martinet? I think Charles Martinet? So, I think so. Yeah. Um, and so, and that was kind of a big deal. Like there was a story about it, and I'm yes. sure they gave her a medal or something. They gave her a big pokeball, golden pokeball. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think it is like I think if you are going to retire from a big character like that, it would be more clear. Do you think? I do think, although <laughs> poor Charles Martinet, we don't even need him anymore. We don't need you anymore, right, Chris? Yep. Yes, I, felt, I am Mario. I felt really bad about that. <laughs> Like, but let the guy voice Mario in the movie and clearly then there will be Well, yeah. Clearly there will be another. And yeah, and that movie made a billion dollars and it has nothing to do with Chris Pratt or Anya Taylor-Joy. I forgot she was in Although that. I would like it if there was more. It was more about her than him. Yeah. Um, But we're not. But sure, there'll be another movie. Fine. But there are going to be Mario games forever. Uh, yeah, that's true. And so they're going to have to. I mean, he doesn't, it's not like he has whole paragraphs of text, you know, but they're going to have to find somebody. Uh, this is like replacing Mel Blanc. Blank? I think it's Blanc. It's Blank. Is it? Is it Blank? Yeah. Bugs Bunny. Sorry. I've been reading and a lot of French literature. It's okay. <laughs> this is like yeah. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. It's yeah. a huge deal. So I think they would make a bigger deal out of it. Um, I have something random that I would like oh. to share okay. really quickly. Um, my sister sent me something that I thought was pretty hilarious. It's, I'm still going to call him tweets. I don't care what Mr. X thinks. Um, so there is Mr. A, X. Yes. There is a tweet by, um, uh, a, I'm going to say at, at whimsy, whimsy pop, uh, W H I M S I P O P. And it's just so spot on. My sister sent it to me and it says, Back in my day, Whoa. we didn't have anime merch. We just had to print pixelated photos of Inuyasha and tape them to our school <laughs> binders. This is 100% correct. And it got me so good that I had to send it to my best friend, who I got into Sailor Moon. And we 
we would write physical letters to each other because she lives in a different state. And we printed out pictures of Sailor Moon and we wrote stuff on the back of them. Okay. All right, Grandma. It's time for bed. (laughs) Thanks for the crab key, Jane. I know, but it was like, (laughs) so she got it so much too. And like we would try going to anime stores and find any Sailor Moon stuff we could find, you know? So it was, it's so different now. It is different. I used to go to um, Seattle. I had a friend yes. that lived in Seattle, and that was the only place that you could get the good toys. Be- and it was probably, I mean, look, ships and planes and, and boxes, this is pre-Amazon, but all these right. things exist, but nobody's going to, you'd have to like special order something to get it all the way to the middle of the country. Yep. But there's, they're right on the coast, and there's yes. a big Japanese population, and there's a lot of nerds. And so they'd have yes. like the best swag stores for uh, Gundams, you know, or statues or, or what have you. And so yes. well, I spend a lot of time there. It was a different time. It was a different Kids time. Kids these days. I know. They get their 3D printed Gokus. I, I see merch and I, I want to buy so much merch, but I just have to like, I have to look away because it's just, it's so expensive. You know what I mean? I want stuff, but I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> She's, she, she wasn't. <laughs> Uh, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll get the money to, uh, buy a lot of merch oh one day, gosh. uh, in an unrelated segment, uh, yes. I would like to introduce some of our new patrons. Yes, let's do it. The podcast. And I'd like to say a big hearty welcome to Cincy Raz, who has become an inner Cinci, uh, recently this last month. Welcome, Cincy uh, Raz. Cincy Raz is part of the team now. And I also wanted to say welcome to, this is actually, um, before our break, uh, and then we did a shore leave, uh, this is like the last week or two of July, so this is overdue, but welcome to Myth Reindeer, who has joined us uh, at the princess level. Welcome, Myth Reindeer. So, yeah, uh, sorry about the delay on that, uh, but we were on a break. We were on a break. <laughs> But welcome to the both of you. Uh, yes. You join the ranks of our Senshi squad and you get access to much, much, much more content available on our Patreon, uh, some of which I'll talk about. But first I wanted to mention, and this is the part where I didn't exactly take a break, <laughs> kind of did, yeah, uh, but didn't exactly sleep in. But um, I was just kind of looking around and thinking... Well, it's time for a new podcast, and uh, <laughs> I've started uh, a new feature yeah. uh, on our Patreon. You know, we are watching Sailor Moon. We're getting near the end, but it's still going to be a little while. Yes. Uh, and I just couldn't wait anymore to start watching Revolutionary Girl Utena. Yes. A show that I discovered a couple of years ago, I think probably when we watched it for animatification, mm-hmm. and thought, I really need to watch this, and yeah. learning that it was uh, made up of some of the creators that worked on Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Only more made me want to get into it. And then also learning that it was based in part, kind of a spiritual, you know, reimagining of Lady Oscar uh, or the Rose of Versailles, which we also talked about on animatification. And I love uh, The Three Musketeers and and, um, French literature. And I'm like, all right, well, I got to watch this thing. Yeah. Um, And I thought, no, I got to wait till the end of Sailor Moon because it's like, this is shojo. That's shojo slash jose. Yeah, like, it's a level yeah. up. Right, right, right. But with your permission, and seeing as we are seventy five percent of the way through, no, I'm sure that'll get fact checked. Don't add us. <laughs> but, Don't add uh, us. But I thought, you know what? Maybe it's time. And so I began watching Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant. But because I'm me, I couldn't just watch it. Of course, I had to really mess that badass up yeah. and so uh what i ended up doing was uh diving into uh not only the reimagining from lady oscar but the setting the themes and the um the symbolism and the things that are going on in the show because if you watch the show you go all right it's a girl that wears biker shorts and she goes to uh, uh an academy where weird things happen and she says boku wa instead of watashi yeah she uses the boys language yes and so you know maybe that's just it but then you start watching and you go well, i don't what was that and what is this supposed to mean and what's, right. what's going on here and we're building up to something mm-hmm. and so i thought all right well then maybe i could talk about this that's what i love about anime in general well honestly. not all anime no i I feel like that's one reason why I got Which into is Sailor fine. Moon. I'm not criticizing. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like Sailor Moon is, you know, 
there, there are we find things sometimes, yes. but immediately like my grad school student sensors went off, <laughs> and I was like, something's happening here. And so I um, had the permission to Google it because I don't want to spoil myself, uh-huh. but it isn't a situation where I must remain unspoiled, pure as the driven snow. I am sorry. Until episode 200. I have put you through this. I've never, it's been like five years. I've never gotten, I've never Googled I, Sailor Moon once. I apologize. Yet you get things like ruined. Like, People are you like, get spoiled. my favorite, uh, I love Galaxia. It's like, I don't know what that is. I know. And click I was like, what, oh, click away, great. Click now away. we know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm allowed to. And so I Googled it. And even the few times that I have Googled Sailor Moon, there is so, first of all, not an original show to do because there are so many people talking about yeah. Utena on blogs, on mediums and Substack, sure. other podcasts. Sure. This is like, this is ripe for analysis. Mm-hmm. And so my analysis had got involved and I created a show called The Duels of the Game where I watch, discuss, and examine every episode of Revolutionary Girl Utena. And every single episode, uh, some new door is opens, and there are ten more doors behind it. And sure, it's, yeah. It's giving me the, ex- the 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 happy kind of panic attack that I look for <laughs> when I get into uh, detailed uh, and uh, rewarding media like this. So that is available. That's you know available to uh, all senshi um, you know inner and up. Uh, that's available now. I think we're on the fifth or sixth episode. So, you know, go check that out if you're inter- interested in um, a show about Utena. Uh, we have plenty of other things. We have our regular feature, Animatification. Yes. Where we talk about a randomly selected episode of an anime. We watch the first episode. Yep. And based solely on that first episode, <laughs> yeah. no matter what it is they're building, no matter what the end game is, uh-huh. we decide, would we continue to watch this or not? Yes. Luckily... Utena made it through, I think. Yeah, yeah. Utena was two thumbs up. Other animes don't make it through. No. Nope. I think you were a, a thumbs down on Gurren Lagan, and that's fine. But like, I don't remember. <laughs> Gurren Lagan is one of those animes that like does not open for you until you... Until you, yeah. But that's so not how I we would, judge them. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's not what we do. No, no. And that's been a long-running feature. I think we've got over 100 episodes of that now. Um, also, uh, we have a newish series called Beyond Good and Ava. Yes. Where we watch, talk about, and, and analyze, which is the right word for this, yep. every episode of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Mm-hmm. And we look specifically at the philosophical and the psychological underpinnings of the show. Yes. I think we talked about the fact that um, you work on Sailor Moon, and then you go from Sailor Moon to either work on Utena or Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, I know. I and know. so all the... All the yeah. Dreamy, oh, symbolism guys went to Utena. All the, oh, I love German philosophers, uh, went to <laughs> the Antinocese Evangelion. And yeah. so uh, every episode we talk about a different psychological concept yes. or condition. We've also talked about the philosophy and uh, the philosophers that influenced the show. That's another show that you watch and you go, ah, oh, robots punching each other. It's awesome. Little kids screaming all the time. Right. This is anime. But then you go, wait a minute, what's a primno box? Right. What does terminal dogma dogma mean? You know. Right. What What does it mean that God is in His heaven and all is right with the world? What is all this stuff? Right. Right. We'll tell you what, what is it with is. all the Christian imagery. And yeah. Stuff why like, all the crosses? Yeah. What's happening here? Uh, yeah. Every episode. That's what we talk about on that show. I also wanted to mention that uh, it is now complete. Our work is done, but the show exists still. Uh, we uh, didn't talk about not so recently now, but over the last couple of years have been watching and talking about the live action Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon series. Excellent. If you took cannot say it enough. If you took it's like a reverse Roger Rabbit. If you took the characters, for, yeah. it's like a cool world, if that makes sense to anybody. If you took the characters from the cartoon and put them through a magic portal yeah. uh, and they came out in the aughts instead of the 90s, yes. uh, that's what the show is. Yeah. It's fantastic. And unlike the show we're currently watching, yeah. it's, got a, it's got an end. <laughs> It, it actually it does. does wrap up. It does somewhat wrap up. Satisf- satisfyingly. Yes. And uh, they never ever really reach the. Um, oh, oh, look! Um, a snap is here. <laughs> what? What? what uh, this band? What are you yeah, guys doing no, here? Yeah, no, it's not. It's not like <laughs> it that. Never, Thank goodness. It never really sells out. Thank goodness. And every episode of that, plus the um, the follow up movie. Yes. Uh, and some other stuff. We talk about the food fashion, the aughts fashion. Oh, there's of a lot live of live action fashion. Japan on Pretty Guardian Sailor Noobs. And it 
is seriously one of my favorite renditions of Sailor Moon. Like, I, I really, really cannot preface it enough. If you have not seen it, do yourself a major favor and go check it out. And then listen to the podcast as a supplement because you get more out of it that way. Yeah. yeah. You love it so much. Why don't you marry it? <laughs> well, I got to go. I got to get a marriage license. Not, yeah. <laughs> not Rika Izumi. No. She's mine. Uh, okay, And then fine. I wanted to mention for, <laughs> uh, for Princess Level patrons, we have another feature. Yes. And that feature is Sailor Cinema, where every month we watch a... Japanese film, an anime film, or a Japan-related film, mm -hmm. and give it the whole, you know, tumbling, give it the whole once-over Yes, uh, in our inimitable way. Um, I wanted to mention that recently we watched Shin Kamen Rider. Yes. The third, arguably fourth, film in the Japan Heroes trilogy, quadrology. Uh-huh. I'm going to leave Ava out of it. Okay. That sounds We're good. We're talking live action here. Yeah. I don't know how Anno feels about that. <laughs> He Which might argue has been a long time coming, um, and that was uh, that was great. We talked about that. Um, we've talked about animes like Perfect Blue. We've talked about yes. Western films like Martin Scorsese's Silence. Uh, Don't forget Black Rain. We talked about Black Rain, <laughs> not the one about Andy Garcia. Look out! Yeah, the, no, <laughs> the one with Michael Douglas. Yeah. Not the not the one about not the World War Two one. Yes. Yeah. Don't get confused. Uh, yeah, but. it's you know it's amazing that. Japan almost immediately, I mean, they had like a film, you know, industry before yeah. World War II, but obviously World War II uh, wasn't great. But we watched um, uh, Stray Dog, which came out in 1947. Oh, so good. Uh, two years after the end of the war. And yeah. already they are making films that are in some ways just blowing Western films away. It's a like Kira Kurosawa, but I've never seen it before. I really, really enjoy it. I mean, I hate to sound like a real weeb, but like, you know, Japanese man, just, uh, they forgot more about filmmaking than we ever knew. You know what I mean? Like they <laughs> uh, just, yeah, the work of Kur Kurosawa and just many other directors that we've talked about, mm -hmm. um, just incredible films. And yeah. so. Haosu. Love. We I just we don't have time to talk about how I know. I know. I, <laughs> I just talk forever about I just re recommended it to my sister. I was like, you have to see this because it's not just a horror film, it's comedic and uh it's just it's amazing. Yeah. Anyways. So anyway, uh, all that and more is available to you if you join our team. Go to patreon.com forward slash sailor noob, become a senchi today. Um, before we move on to the end here, yeah. uh, we're talking about uh, news stories. There's a news story that I want to talk about. Yeah. That's Man Eats Fish. Man Eats Fish? Man's eating a fish. He's got a big smile on his face. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida yes. and three of his cabinet members ate Fukushima fish sashimi. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, today at a lunch meeting. I guess that happened a while ago because they're ahead of us. Uh, but the point is, <laughs> is that they're going, look, everybody, it's fine. And I'm like, remember that episode of The Simpsons where yeah. uh, they had Mr. Burns <laughs> eat the three... Three-eyed fish. Yeah. Uh, Fukushima, that is to say uh, the Fukushima power plant, which yes. uh, the one that uh, melted down was called Fukushima Daiichi? Fukushima Big One? I guess so. The Big One. That's, wow. Great name, everybody. What? That's awful. After the but tsunami yeah. and earthquake in 2011, of course, it mm -hmm. was um, damaged and melted down. Uh, not quite as bad as Chernobyl, but definitely the second biggest nuclear disaster was, on record. It was, it was bad. And a lot of people died from the tsunami and from the uh, earthquake. Mm -hmm. But no one, as opposed to Ch Chernobyl, where... Um, people you know, just left. Well, people left, but, you know, they've determined... And it's impossible to determine the longest term effects, but they know around 4,000 people died directly as a result oh, of it. Gosh. Um, the amount of casualties uh, of people that have died because of the Fushima accident, zero. There are no confirmed deaths. And you're dealing with the USSR in the 80s, mm -hmm. you know, the most secretive thing ever. Sure, Japan, I'm sure they'd like to say, well, they were old. But as far as we know, no one has died. So I'm not saying okay. it's not a big deal. Right. I'm not saying it wasn't harmful to the environment. Of course. But it has been, they have done everything in their power uh, after the uh, after it disaster, melted down, yeah. uh, to help fix things, and so one thing that they're doing now is that 
they have all this water. Yeah. This water that they use to cool the plant, to hose the plant down. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, I think the, um, the the piles, which, you know, when these things melt down, you can't, all right, we'll get it and take it out of there. You no. can't take it out of there. No. It has to stay there basically forever. Yeah. And one of the things that they do is they spray it with water to keep the dust down because you don't want um, radioactive particles oh, sure. of what they call corium. Okay. Corium is basically nuclear fuel that has gotten so hot that it has melted. It has melted parts of the building, the ground. Ugh, it's gross. just a slurry of bad stuff. Sounds really awful. And so that's going to be there forever, basically. Right. But they take this water and they can't just pour it down the drain. Mm-hmm. So they treat it. And the treatment, what the treatment does is it removes um, things like cesium, things like um, strontium, uh, these um, by- byproducts of nuclear uh, decay. Sure. And they are the bad ones. They are the um, chemicals or molecules that are additive. Um, strontium is, this was um, talked about with the bombs, with uh, Chernobyl. Strontium mimics uh, calcium uh, biologically. So when you get mm. strontium in your blood, in your body, your, your body goes, oh, calcium, great. And it's like, no, 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 don't, oh, make, a, don't oh, make a radioactive bone oh, that's going to be really grace. bad for you. Yeah. So what they do is they treat this water, take all that out. There's only a little bit of stuff left called tritium, which is also radioactive, but it's not quite as bad. But then they have to store it. And they've got about like a thousand huge tanks of this water. Oh, my god! And so the plan is they're going to just release it into the ocean because it is at a point where, according to the standards that the International Energy uh, Atomic Energy um, Commission mm-hmm. has set, mm-hmm. it's quote unquote, safe to send out now. I don't know that I would agree and with so that. And so they've talked about this for a while, and this week they began, you know, releasing it. Um, obviously, okay. Greenpeace is not happy about this. Of course not. Um, China specifically is not happy about it's this. It's going to probably affect them, too. And has um, banned imports of Japanese seafood in oh. response to this. Wow. Um, Korea seafood. has split the difference <laughs> because Korea has also... Uh, complained about it, but yeah. the Korean prime minister uh, also had a fish uh, lunch uh, this week. Oh, come on. But with like South Korean fish to say okay. the fish around Korea is fine. Mm, so good. Give uh-huh. me that kimchi. Uh-huh. Uh, and so Great. this has been a problem. And I was reading an article on Japan today. The funny thing about J- Japanese news is that it is very unemotional. <laughs> I don't mean. I to, can see that. I don't mean to paint this country with an entire brush. They're they're just going to tell you but the they facts. They report the facts, and that's it. I'm not saying they are keeping the, some of the um, emotions and the relevant facts out of the story. No. Then I read it on American news. I read it on CNN. Yeah. And they're like, China rages about. Oh my god. Water thing, and it's almost like what is this British tabloids? It's so dramatic. But the CNN article did go a lot deeper because they talked to a bunch more people. And one of the things that I saw with that was that China's complaining about this. But to be honest, any nation that has uh, nuclear reactors like this yeah. has this wastewater. And they all release it. Oh. Once it reached this 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 standard of, of neutrality or cleanliness. Oh, really? And so China's making a big deal out of this. Obviously, everybody's hyped up and worried about yeah, the Fukushima disaster. But maybe it's like political stuff because China tends to complain about whenever Japan sneezes, China gets mad about stuff. Well, I mean, you think about it. 2011, that's over 10 years ago now. Um, That's like 12 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, and imagine they're they're not releasing it all at once, right? No, they will be releasing it over the course of the next 30 years. That sounds so much better than like... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it'll what be, it was originally it'll be poisoned said. for thirty years. No, no. I mean, I I'm not excited about it. But like, if if you're telling me that every nuclear plant does this, it makes me wonder if this is really bad or it. it should we do nuclear power at all? I guess is what I'm. Kind oh, of that's thinking. that conversation can't happen on this show. Yeah, but, I know. But this is one of the wages of of doing nuclear power. And I do think that Japan was really pro nuclear power before yeah, this happened this. yeah before this happened and until now there's they're moving away from it for sure well a lot of countries are moving away from nuclear power um at a time when we are running out of fossil fuels so i don't know what do you got guys um, I don't know. so there's Wind, been a lot of protests windmills yeah there's been a lot of well we do have those yeah uh there's a windy all the time 
So there's been a lot of protests, specifically outside of Fukushima. Uh, some of the mm. protesters have been um, the South Koreans who are not excited about this. Sure. Um, there has been apparently a lot of um, like crank calls or uh, or threatening calls oh. from Chinese numbers. <laughs> it's the internet. You just go, Weird. oh, what's the Fukushima office? Oh, there's the area code. Do, do, do. Okay. Yeah, what are you doing with that water? Knock it How? off. I don't speak Chinese. Um <laughs> I'm trying to translate you right now. Some uh, customers in South Korea have been panic buying sea salt and fish like ahead of this. So the thing is, is that I, it's all heightened because everything's heightened now. Mm-hmm. And if this had happened, you know, 50 years ago, they wouldn't have told anybody about it and nobody would right. be worried. Now, I'm not saying that's good, but I'm saying that I'm reporting this because it's interesting and it's Japan related, but also to say just Take all the facts in. You know, we don't yeah. have to get excited about everything. Right. And this this stuff has been around, you know, this this process has been done before. I'm not yeah. saying it's a good thing. And I'm definitely saying that the standards at Fukushima were not up to surviving an earthquake and a tsunami, as right. we found out, which is, you know, the real problem. But right. that we now we're crying over radioactive water, right? And so... <laughs> It's a very uh, tense situation uh, yeah. over there, and this definitely isn't helping. But this guy's tucking into that fish. He really likes this. I, I I don't know. Like I I mean I think in some ways it's I understand why why you do the gesture, but it's it's a little much. Like you you uh, mm, see mm, mm, yeah oh it's so good. Did you say it was sashimi too? So it's like raw fish. It's sashimi also with vegetables and then rice, which was grown in the Fukushima area. I I mean, look, I think that Fukushima has been doing its darndest to come back from this, and I think it has been really hard. And I think a lot of people have been avoiding Fukushima. Yeah. Um, I think the rice would probably be okay. I, I don't know how close it is to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is everything in Fukushima, has everything been touched by by the nuclear power? Well, radiation gets everywhere. And the problem uh, with the, the chemicals that I mentioned, they're not chemicals, they're, they're molecules, um, is biomagnification, is mm-hmm. when it gets into something, it gets into a plant, then you don't just eat one plant, one yeah. grain of rice, you eat a lot of them. And mm-hmm. so that delivers it more into you. Um, but they're saying it's fine uh, if Kishida, you know, shows up at his next press conference looking like the guy from RoboCop. Oh my God. Then we know something went wrong. Uh, but yeah, you know, don't. I would say, you know, don't worry about it. But at the same time, maybe have something prepackaged. Have a ramen instead of a sushi oh if you're worried about it. I know uh, Ken Watanabe. Um, the actor. The actor Ken Watanabe. Um, he. Like, I can't remember if he has, like, a... Um, he glowered at the radiation and it went away. <laughs> yeah. He, so I think he went to help them with the cleanup when it initially happened. And he got really close to and got to know a lot of people who live there. So he actually opened up a restaurant there. And you can sometimes go to the restaurant and see Ken Watanabe there. <laughs> Like he goes to the restaurant. Just, just like at like, the bar? Or? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> just hanging out. Um, In the back, chopping so, up daikon. Yeah, he, he's been very vocal about trying to destigmatize everything that happened in Fukushima and try to get other people to come there. That's good. So, yeah, it is good. Um, I, I, I hope, I wish for the best. I don't know that I would go with sashimi. If I'm going to have to try a fish from Fukushima, maybe I might go with uh, something that's been fried or cooked all the way through. Yeah, that might be the way to go. I don't know if the cooking is going to change anything. I don't know. But, it might not. Um, yeah, when I was uh, going all the way back to the UK uh, from yeah. the beginning of the show, uh, when I went <laughs> to um, the UK for uh, for two weeks, it was right in the middle of the um, hoof and mouth crisis. Oh, gosh, yes, I remember uh, that. Of the year, like, 2000. And we were told, you know, don't eat beef anywhere. And it's like, right. oh, man, I want the I want the British beef, you know. Uh, but we did. We didn't eat beef anywhere. Went to a lot of great restaurants, had a lot of really great food. People talk about how bad food is in the UK. But I know. Um, went to a lot of pizza places. No, um, <laughs> I did have some really good pizza, chips. actually, in London. <laughs> OK, uh, but like the it. last, you know, the Friday before we left on the Sunday, um, 
you know, we're Americans. And it was like, I got to have a hamburger. Oh, my God. So we went to Burger King. Wow. I just figure their, their beef doesn't even come from England. You know what I mean? <laughs> God knows where it comes from. But you're, but you're here today. It's frozen. They ship it fine. in. It's fine. <laughs> I got that. My eye twitches a little bit, but it's all right. <laughs> It was worth it. I got a, a little thing where I, yeah, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> well, I think we're just about at the end of the show. Well, but I did want to ask you, Cal. Oh, no. What are your predictions for Supers? Oh, no. We, we got to know. I knew this was coming. Yes. I knew this was yes. coming. It, this is a tough one. I get that. And I, I'll tell you why it's a tough one. Because we spent 21 episodes <laughs> jerking off uh-huh. and doing absolutely nothing. Yes. And I was sitting down and thinking, well, what has happened up to this point? In the first season, yeah. you introduce the character. You introduce all the characters. Yes. But over the course of the season, it becomes clear, like, what is this about? I don't mm-hmm. care what happens. What's it about? And it's about this character, Usagi. Taking on this the mantle yeah. of a hero and somebody who can defeat, you know, Super Barrel. And, right. And it takes the death of literally everybody that she knows. Oh, my God, I know. <laughs> for that so to happen. So traumatic. Yeah. But she finally does it. And, yes, there's a side story about how, well, actually, you're a moon alien. But, you know, that none of that really matters. It's all about her accepting this destiny and, and then using it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, R is like, yeah, we know it's sort of split up. Like the first part is re- reclaiming that. Ail and on, yeah. Yeah. And then the next part is sort of ensuring the future of their life, their yeah. their associations, their clan, whatever you want to call it. Right. And also kind of, you know, doing some doing something sort of royal and kingly in that, like making amends for and and, you know, forming an alliance presumably with these for the black moon clan yes you know because this is all in the future so we're, we've got a hero now we know this hero has a future right right uh, and they have made sure that that future will happen now because of things yeah yeah and a you know kid or whatever right uh introduce new <laughs> character the future. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> from the future uh, to take off your clothes no oh my god your boots and motorcycle <laughs> yeah. uh and then, you know, and then the third season is like, uh, <laughs> the third season's kind of funny, but the third season yeah. is sort of, is more just, okay, let's put this into practice. So we've, we've got it. We've got the hero. Yes. We've got, you know, her cast of characters and this legacy that she's protecting. Now let's take this completely outside threat, but yep. also, a th- and then introduce, you know, two new characters Yes. N- or three new characters, Yeah. Right. Uh, f- four new characters, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. Uh, and... How, do, how does she, you know, put this into practice? And you're literally facing, you know, the first thing is like we face an ancient enemy. The second thing is we face an enemy from the future. The third one is we face an enemy from another universe. Yes. Uh, right. And then the fourth one we face f- from another reality. Yeah. Have to, if they don't fight God in season five, I'm going to be real sad. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, but the fourth season and the fourth season, like, maybe falters a little bit because where do you take it now you know what i mean i know and they don't know because the first 20 or so episodes is they're just they don't do anything they do nothing at all yes so if i go by that framework like what is this about yeah the answer has to be i'm going to take the show's word for it Mm -hmm. that it's about dreams and about sure and about potential Mm -hmm. right it's about what you want and we have not established that well I don't think for our characters in the same way yeah. that we established Usagi's road to being a hero, Usagi's road to getting her boyfriend back. Right. But it becomes more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Usagi's uh, road to uh, – what's she doing in the third season? Beca- become She wants to become more. She, she wants to wants... become the, the type of woman and hero that she, yeah. deserves, you know, tuxedo mask, but by extension – you know, the trust that people put in her. Right. And she's she's trying to, like, become more of that hero and uh, a better princess, a better leader. And in season four, I'm going to take these tests. <laughs> what, the, what happened with the tests? Well, I, that's my prediction. Okay. It will take these tests. Okay. And 
assuming that she's not, you know, working at a Lawson's uh, in season five. Yeah, right. She's going to pass the test. Mm-hmm. She's not going to get a great grade, uh-huh. but she's going to pass the test. Sure. And I, the, but the real, the real main character, uh, Chibiusa, uh-huh. uh, is going to, I don't know. Uh, I think that she is going to, I almost said consummate. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. I don't mean that. it like that. No. But she is going to realize this love that she has. There's been flirtations in earlier seasons, but yeah. <laughs> we, we keep setting up that, you know, we keep cutting to her with like, do you think that somebody could fall in love with, with a horse? Yeah, you know, right. We're, we're going we're gonna to pay that off in whatever uh-huh. horrible way we, we come up with. Yeah. And because we live in a sane world, it will be thwarted. <laughs> It'll be Chibi uses for it. She'll lo- love and lose. Uh-huh. She has to. <laughs> this is a wish more than a prediction. Oh, my God. Uh, and so I think that that will take place in the tests. And then as far as the villains go, they're slippery. Like, I don't, you know, the, the Zirconia mm-hmm. is as slippery as the catfish that she looks like. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they want at all. They want to rule the world. They want to take over dreams or, or something. Hopefully there will be, yeah. you know, they slow played us with mm-hmm. Professor Tome away, but that was all part of the gag, you know? Yes. It was like, do, have fun with the witches. Yes. What's it all about? And then we learn, oh, there's a huge, like, backstory to, yes. to this. I Maybe that'll be true. Maybe it won't. I guess I can't predict. I We will learn. Uh, here's my prediction. I'm supposed to be predicting. We will learn... <laughs> The connection between Pegasus and the Dark Moon, Dead Moon Circus. The Dead Moon Circus. You know, we will learn. Yes, he's powerful. Yes, he his horn or his energy or can do something for them. It's what they seek to wield. But we will learn, you know, what the what the rumpus is between between these two. Yeah. Um, and Ami will. Uh, not go to Germany. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something specific. Uh, again, I, I, you made me realize, I was thinking, I don't feel like there have been a lot of episodes where me is like, we should be studying. <laughs> no, they've really let that go. Uh, and so I'm, I'm actually last, kind of really surprised. The last dozen S episodes or so. Like that. <laughs> nobody's nobody's yeah. brought up studying. Yeah. What's going on There's here? a couple where it's like, well, maybe we can go to this concert. But like. They're not even bothering to no. do that now. We don't so. see them at school at all. We see them at Fruits Parlor Crown. We don't even see them in the... Sometimes we see them oh, in the arcade. Uh, Unazuki. Yeah. We'll get her first kiss. Okay. There, there you go. That's a specific that's character. That's a specific thing. Uh, prediction. Um, and I don't know how we elevate the relationship between Zagi and Mamoru anymore. I don't know. I think that they will have some kind of... This is dumb, but they will have some kind of... Um, like date okay sure <laughs> some kind of date yes uh, sleepover date oh my god uh no an important date because they've barely seen each other this year at least in this first That's half true. of the season every time they see each other he's like oh i gotta go mm-hmm. you, you gotta study no yeah you do <laughs> so if we don't have the we join them at a market we're not really doing that he's not well, around That's true. he shows up to do the tuxedo mask thing so yeah. we need to you know re-energize and renew that relationship as well that's what I think. I like that. Yeah. It's not exactly like a list of things we can check off, but well, those are my impressions. Because otherwise, I, I got no idea. The trio is gone now, so it's really hard to make predictions as far as that goes. Yeah. So. And it, yeah. And like, you know, because <laughs> because you've already told me, um, what, what, they're not coming I, back. What did I tell you? Oh. So it's not like <laughs> they're not coming back. So it's not like we'll get to the last no, Zirconia, I'll stop you. And then like, oh my God, a fish comes flying in and slaps her in the face. That would have been, that would be amazing. <laughs> na, 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 na. Tiger kinda, comes out. I <laughs> kind of really wish that happened. And a bird. Yeah. Form of bird. Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. That would be great. But that's not going to But they're stuck in uh, Pegasus's shadowy dream <laughs> they're in his forest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Puts the lotion on the skin. Oh, my God. Or it gets the holes again. Oh, it's so gross. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, I have been watching ahead a little bit. I do feel like it has gotten a little little better, which is just like. Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't give me hope. I know. (laughs) All right. Well, 
next time uh, on our next episode, we will be talking about episode number 150 for that far now. Uh, Amazon Nessu, Kagami no Ura Kara Kita Akumu in Japanese. The Amazon Ness, Nightmare from Behind the Mirrors, the English translation, and the English title, A New Nightmare. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That like Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, the Freddy stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I'm going to call on the Pegasus phone, bitch. <laughs> I'm your boyfriend now. No. Oh my! Oh my God! No. Yeah. Oh. So. Wow. <laughs> so I, I have to brace myself. I got a quick speed watch the entire uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. Uh, decology. How many are there? There's a lot of them. There are a lot of them. I think I've only first seen, one's good. I've seen the first and the second one. Uh, the second one's good. Yeah. Third no. one's. Uh, I don't think I've seen it. pretty good. Any more than that? And so. then they, it's, it just kind of goes downhill from there. <laughs> We have plenty of time to talk about that yes. in the second half of Sailor Moon Supers. That's right. Well, that's our show for this week, and the name of the moon will be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor News. Radioactive fish attack! <laughs> 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 <laughs>